So, I spent my PhD research on the Uzbek cotton affair where I tried to, to understand the Soviet collapse from a non-central perspective. And uh, during my research, I was quite fascinated by the figure of Sharaf Rashid, uh, as we know, was the first uh, secretary of Uzbekistan from 1959 to 1983, whose name was uh, uh, notoriously associated with a discrediting campaign that was done posthumously, so after Rashid's death in the in the mid-80s, uh, so his involvement, his association with corruption, uh, he was described to be a mock friend. And we all know the, the, this, this story. Uh, what is less famous is that he had also a key role in the history of international uh, relations of the USSR and was part of the Soviet Third Worldism, representing so the inclusion of an Oriental, Muslim and uh, local elite integrated in the Soviet system. So basically, Rashidov, during his career, was promoting Uzbekistan as a, a model for the Third War. And uh, this topic emerged in uh, 2015 during my researches in Uzbekistan. I was in, in Jizak visiting the Monumental Museum of Sharaf Rashidov, the Uzbekistan a collection of his, uh, his uh, belongings. And uh, I had the opportunity to look at some of his personal uh, materials and to rebuild his um, his travels that were created in the museum in order to reconstruct some of the less notorious aspects of the political life of, uh, of Rashid. So, just to give some, some, some information, Rashid was born in Jizak in 1917. He was famous for his uh, close ties with Brezhnev. He was famous for being uh, an intellectual and a writer. Here we have uh, Bobby Italy, that was uh, probably his most famous uh, novel, uh, uh, 1951. He was famous for developing uh, uh, cultural politics, parallel at uh, the same time with the Russification of uh, Uzbekistan. He was famous, as we mentioned, for his neo-patrimonial attitude and for implementing the cotton monoculture. In, uh, in Uzbekistan, we see how in only tw 20 years the production of cotton uh, was uh, at least officially uh, doubled. And uh, uh, so uh, Uzbekistan uh, basically became an avant-garde of uh, agriculture and Rashidov was identified as the father of the Uzbek modernization. So during the Cold War competition and in the aftermath of the decolonization, this narrative uh, uh, was a key of Soviet third worldism, uh, promoting so the Uzbek uh, way of modernity. And uh, here I was uh, typing the slide, the Rashidov's Cold War, because effectively he had uh, a key role in the, in, the, in the Cold War. You know that uh, during the Cold War, USSR emphasized its anti-colonial and uh, anti-imperialist attitude in order to attract the third world countries that were emerging from uh, the decolonization. And in this game, the use of some non-Russian, of some Muslim interlocutors for the Third World was very important for, the, for some diplomatic missions. We, have, we know the role of Muhyiddinov in Syria that basically put the base for the, that kind of military cooperation that is still giving some problems nowadays. Uh, we know the role of Mustafayev, of Akhundov, sort of the uh, Azerbaijanis uh, in um, in, uh, in Egypt and the relation uh, with Nasser. We know the role of Kunayev uh, and his interaction with, uh, with, uh, with the communists of, uh, of Persia. So in this co constellation of secondary diplomacy, I wanted to speak about Rashidov because he as well had a key role and was a protagonist in this Soviet uh, policy. Uh, during his career, Rashidov visited something like 33 countries, so an impressive number of uh, travels, and he promoted uh, the Soviet solidarity to the decolonizing world, for example, in some uh, key events as the Afro-Asian Solidarity Conference in Cairo in uh, 1957, in Jakarta in 1965, uh, in the Havana, the Tri-Continental uh, uh, Conference, where he was inviting the patriots of the oppressive world to unite uh, in the struggle against uh, the, the American imperialism. So it's interesting to see this very harsh tones um, that was unveiling a very proactive and quite aggressive attitude uh, of Soviets behind uh, the narrative of uh, peaceful uh, uh, coexistence. And uh, Shidov had uh, also a role at strategic uh, level because in May 1962 he was uh, heading the Soviet delegation during the famous uh, Operation Anadir that, uh, as we know, was uh, uh, finalized to install nuclear missiles uh, in Cuba 
then we know what was the dialogue of that story. And Rashido was uh, at the head of uh, that delegation, and he was able to um, to build uh, um, a relation with Castro that is quite evident when we see how uh, even Castro was uh, uh, impressed by Uzbekistan and by Rashido during uh, his uh, visits in the USSR in May 1963. Uh, that occasion, Castro was in a visit in the uh, in, um, in Soviet Union, that he also spent uh, four days uh, between Tashkent, Samarkand, he was visiting some factories, he was visiting the uh, horses, the uh, angry steppe. And on that occasion, Rashidov was uh, showing to Castro the Uzbek model of development of, of agriculture. And uh, it, it's very interesting to see what, what was the reaction of, uh, of Castro on that occasion. And the, the relationship between Castro and Rashid have continued also in something quite interesting to, to evaluate at that museum, in the exchange of gifts. There is a, a, an embalmed crocodile that was given from, uh, from Castro, and it's part of that kind of uh, kitsch diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but there is a collection of letters, and it's quite interesting, the, the relation with Castro. And uh, at bilateral level, this was not only for, for Cuba, so it was not uh, only uh, in a kind of anti-imperialistic attitude, but it was also with Middle Eastern leaders. For example, Rashido was known for his uh, close relations with uh, Algerian President Boumediene, and uh, he led four very important missions uh, in, uh, in Algeria in 1963 with an agreement on the economic and technical cooperation with the, uh, the establishment of the first loan for 90 million rubles. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the, in 1964, when he was uh, granting technical assistance for the construction of a metallurgical plant. In 1972, so in the aftermath uh, of the worsening of the Soviet-Egyptian relations, the USSR was uh, um, establishing, was trying to establish closer relations uh, uh, with uh, Algeria. And uh, in that framework, uh, we put the basis for more economic support and even for the uh, military cooperation that uh, defined the history of uh, soviet algeria relations of the 70s. And also in 1981, Rashido was in Algiers uh, again uh, to meet with uh, the new president, uh, Ben Jadid, that at that time was uh, uh, apparently taking some distance from, uh, from, from USSR. So, uh, also at the internal, uh, his activity was not only abroad, but uh, was uh, very famous, the role of Rashidov in promoting uh, Tashkent as uh, something uh, like, that reminds Baku of uh, 1920, so a city symbolizing uh, uh, the, the essence of the Soviet multi-ethnic state, and that at the same time wanted to be the lighthouse of the people of the East. Uh, this was quite evident already during World War II, when Tashkent was uh, hosting an evacuation of more, something like two, two million uh, um, European refugees, uh, and uh, at the same time uh, uh, building this uh, narrative of uh, Tashkent, uh, of the city of Druzba Narod, of fraternity among the Soviet people. Uh, this myth was uh, further enforced in the aftermath of the earthquake in 1966, when thousands of Soviet contractors from other republics uh, contributed in the reconstruction. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, these, uh, these constructors uh, that were uh, constituting these fraternal battalions even settled in uh, Tashkent, creating new neighbors. Uh, and the housing complexes here was just so showing some of them named after Kiev, uh, Ufa, uh, Chelyabinsk, etc. Um, at international level, Tashkent uh, also had a role because it claimed to represent the compatibility between the modern socialism uh, and the Eastern society, especially, as we said, in the aftermath of the <coughs> reconstruction of Tashkent in 1966, uh, when Tashkent was uh, rebuilt as a modern city with new architecture, with large boulevards, with uh, research centers, with um, uh, with even the, the first metro in Central Asia in 1977. So Tashkent uh, wanted to uh, be the gate to Asia, to, to constitute even a Soviet outpost to Southern Asia. It's very interesting, for example, the role that Tashkent assumed uh, uh, in relation with, uh, with India is not something new. We already know that in Tashkent was founded in 1920 the first Communist Party of India. 
and uh, then even Rashid had a role in uh, um, in uh, relations uh, with India during the visit of uh, Khrushchev uh, in Asia in 1955. Rashid assisted Khrushchev at that time, and he was so impressed by India that he even wrote. Uh, a novel called uh, um, Song of uh, Kashmir uh, that was dedicated uh, to, the, to the romance uh, of, uh, of India. And uh, um, the, the role of Tashkent was even uh, evident during the uh, negotiations for that led to the Tashkent Declaration of 1966. We know that in Tashkent, uh, uh, Shastri and Khan, so the President of India and Pakistan met in Tashkent. Uh, here we have uh, a picture of them with Rashid, who was uh, cutting off Kusini, that <laughs> was the real mediator. But uh, anyway, I mean, uh, Rashid had uh, this ceremonial role in organizing this, uh, this important meeting with, in, uh, with um, Indians and, pa and Pakistanis. And also, uh, Rashid was so involved in the politics of Indian communists that he was even called to, um, for example, to open the 10th Congress of the Communist Party of India in 1975. Uh, then the, the role of, of Tashkent even emerged in the uh, organization of the international festivals. Uh, we know that since 1968 uh, was the first uh, festival of international uh, cinema of countries of uh, Africa, Asia, and, uh, and then even extended to, to Latin America. But generally, Tashkent was. Uh, uh, inviting writers, dozens of writers, poets, journalists, and even sportsmen uh, from, from <coughs> in order to symbolize this uh, brotherhood of uh, people. And we see what was the uh, effect, the, the, the political impact of this festival. Rashid also was opening all uh, these meetings. This is the last report, <coughs> this is the report of the last event that was uh, held by Rashid in uh, September 1983 the uh, seventh conference of the Asian and African writers. Uh, however, uh, uh, the sheet of diplomacy was not only aimed at showing the Uzbek modernity, uh, but was even aimed at uh, reconcil uh, reconciling the relations with the traditional societies and, uh, and Islam. In fact, this is the uh, final point I want to consider uh, with you. You know that uh, in, since the late uh, 60s, the Brezhnev new course of appeasement with uh, Islam was functional for the uh, Soviet third world East, uh, strategy. By showing this kind of tolerant face of the USSR to the traditional uh, Eastern societies in order to avoid that kind of criticism that the uh, USSR was receiving, uh, the idea of uh, still a repressive uh, regime even on cultural affairs. And in this task, Rashid was uh, very active, and together with, um, with uh, the, the Mufti uh, of Tashkent, uh, Baba Khanov, uh, promoted Tashkent as an international center for Islam. And this is very important, especially as, uh, as we mentioned at the end of the 60s, with the new course that was aimed at uh, attracting investments from the sector in order to restore monuments and, uh, and place to uh, relaunch Tashkent, uh, Tashkent as a center for theological studies, to reopen mosques and, uh, and uh, even uh, theological schools, to uh, launch publications uh, in for, uh, for a foreign uh, audience. And we have publication in Arabic, in English, in French, in Farsi, in Dari, and even in Uzbek. But it's interesting that uh, this uh, Muslim of the Soviet East was uh, in Uzbek, but transliterated in uh, uh, Arabic scripts, so basically it was not so easy to <laughs> be understood uh, domestically. And uh, so he did, uh, this is an example of this kind of publication of the 60s. But uh, uh, another important element that we have to consider in the Rashid of Diplomacy, its attitude towards Islam, is the organization of international events. Events in uh, Tashkent in 1970s was held the first international conference on yes, Islam. I'm sure we know that this conference was uh, Highly politicized, uh, there was a selection of themes, of the issues, and even of the audience. But anyway, it was representing a kind of a reconciliation with Islam that for sure was just a facade. We know that uh, only a minimal part of the holy places uh, in, in Uzbekistan uh, were working, uh, and uh, Islam remained under uh, strict uh, uh, control of the state. So, 
This, comp this uh, uh, apparent compromise with uh, Islam seems to be credible, at least until the Soviet invasion of Aga Afghanistan that banished the credibility of uh, this uh, promoted, this narrative of Soviet uh, tolerance. In fact, <coughs> Rashidov, who was absolutely an atheist uh, figure, I mean, we cannot find uh, any reference to Islam in his uh, literary works, and uh, even speaking with uh, people who were, in, uh, were working with him, I mean, I never had any kind of evidence of, of him as a believer. So, uh, Rashidov and Uzbekistan, for the strategic uh, um, position, were absolutely involved in the invasion of Afghanistan. And, uh, for example, Rashidov was one of the main sponsors of the Saur Revolution in Afghanistan in 1978. And also, Uzbekistan logistically became, uh, I mean, for his, uh, uh, for his geography, became the center of the Soviet troops to Afghanistan. In Uzbekistan, were based uh, the, the air bases. And uh, also the ground forces were accessed in Afghanistan from the past, uh, from, from the past. Yes. <coughs> uh, at the same time, Tashkent was the cog of the Afghan Sovietization. In fact, uh, in, fact that in uh, Tashkent were forced and uh, new generations of Afghan communists. Uh, at the same time, from Tashkent uh, arrived the propaganda, was prepared the propaganda for, uh, for Afghanistan. And uh, Tashkent was, to some extent, also the first landmark for the Afghan leaders. We, for example, Karmal, who had a kind of um, really respectful and uh, maybe we can also say uh, devotion for, for Rashid. Uh, they had very, very close ties, and he seemed, uh, to some extent, also to imitate uh, Rashid's attitudes and uh, Rashid's narrative. So, the, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan undermined the credibility of the Soviet. Uh, uh, anti-imperialist uh, third worldism. At the same time, it undermined the, uh, the credibility of Soviet mus uh, muftis that were justifying the invasion uh, and, uh, and uh, under the banner of the um, Muslim solidarity and even under the banner, uh, under the banner of um, the socialist solidarity, so a kind of overlap of concepts. And uh, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan was basically undermining the appeasement between the Marxism and Islam that in the 70s, uh, at least, seemed, seemed to be, to, to some extent, still credible. What was the immediate consequence uh, uh, of that? The September um, 1980 uh, conference in Tashkent to celebrate uh, the 15th uh, century uh, of uh, Egira was uh, an event that was uh, promoted by the Soviet propaganda as the most important uh, event in the Muslim world uh, after World War II. This event was generally boycotted. I mean, only 76 universities <coughs> participated uh, in the event. And uh, we see this kind of disenchantment by the fact that uh, after, uh, after this conference, no, no more major events were uh, anymore organized in Tashkent, and only some minor delegation and selected delegations were were invited, while at the same time, radical Islam identified USSR as the main uh, enemy to fight. So just to give some, some, some final conclusion, so uh, Rashid's promotion of the Uzbek modernity, of the Soviet anti-imperialism and anti-colonialism, and uh, also uh, this attempt to uh, reconciliation between the socialism and Islam, were to some extent considerable as paradoxes uh, if we contextualize these attempts to the Soviet model uh, that often seem to repeat some of the uh, colonial dynamics uh, in uh, Central Asia. But I know that I am opening a big debate on this. However, the legacies, uh, the legacies of Rashidovism are quite visible in the identity of a post-Soviet uh, Republic of Uzbekistan that seems to repeat a decommunized and a nationalist version of that multinational and progressivist UDS-SSR. Thank you. Thank you.